in general, um, updates to masteries after playing for a couple more weeks and doing all my data collection for runes, I learned some stuff about masteries. I'm going to go through those real quick. Uh, and then once we do that, we'll go into the actual rune guide itself. And this will mostly serve to let people trickle into the stream, but also in general, I think this is um, just kind of valuable to get out to people. So um, one of the major things that I've noticed, actually, is especially for ranged supports, uh, Greenfather's Gift tends to actually win more often than Bandit does. Now the thing is, it feels really good getting Bandit, because at 10 minutes you earn 100 gold, and every time you auto-attack someone, that's 3 gold, and this is all very useful, and obviously that's quite nice to have. Um, but what's interesting, especially in the support role, is that even though having your individual gold gain is really nice. Um, Greenfather's Gift helps you push people out of lane, and that tends to be even more effective. It doesn't help you as much, but it helps your team a little bit more, so this ends up being a pretty good mastery. Uh, the other thing we started seeing a lot of, and I'll try to find a page that makes sense here, um, is this mastery is actually much better than I think most of us think. Right now, uh, Insight is getting played much more often than Fearless is. Its its general pick rate is much higher as a mastery, but Fearless is winning a lot more games. Now, not on every single champion. There's still some where it makes more sense to go down here for Insight. But basically, if you're the kind of champion that doesn't have a ton of resists, or you're getting pushed out of lane, or you're kind of dueling a lot, Fearless is a really big deal because you're getting actually quite a bit of stats for when they hit you. Uh, several times I've been asked, do these stats come in before the first attack lands? And I don't know for certain. Um, I would guess that the designers did make it happen this way, though that is not a guarantee for sure. Either way, though, you're not taking a single point of damage, and that's it. You're usually getting hit multiple times. So, for example, when a Rangar tries to jump at you, Fearless will trigger on, and you'll get, you know, 15, 20, 30, plus 10% of your bonus armor, when he jumps on you and tries to one-shot you, when Fizz does this, when Zed does this, okay, it won't block Death Mark, but it'll block all the other damage that Zed put onto you. Uh, and this tends to be really useful. So Fearless is a better mastery than I think a lot of us gave credit for. Uh, the other thing I learned while kind of diving into this is basically comparing Legendary Guardian, which is bonus armor and MR for nearby enemy champions, against Swiftness. And what I generally found is that if you were an, if that if you were going to go down into Courage of the Colossus in the first place, these are actually pretty comparable. The basic rationale is if you already have a lot of armor in Magic Resist, the up to 15 armor MR bonus is not a very big deal. So if you're Nautilus, for example, or top lane Scion, you don't really need Legendary Guardian. You'd rather just have the Tenacity and Slow Resist so that people can't kind of get rid of you and you can remain sticky as a tank and do fun things like that. Um, but if you're playing someone like Riven, or um, even things like Aurelia, and this might seem weird, you're like, but I'm Riven, I'll only die if I'm stunned. That's really not quite true. Um, that even though Tenacity and Slow Resist are useful on slightly squishier champions, 15 armor and magic resist in a team fight prevents you from getting one shot. And it helps you take one extra attack from the enemy AD carry in a team fight, and that ends up being a bigger deal than getting out of the stun sooner. So, um, Legendary Guardian compared to Swiftness on champions, again, like Aurelia, like Riven, who are still going down for Courage of the Colossus, um, they actually get more out of going Legendary Guardian. So, FYI. That's some new technology we found out. Another thing we found out, and I think this is very interesting, is very few champions outside of the bottom lane are going to ever go exactly 12 points into Cunning. Uh, supports are going to do it for either Greenfather's Gift or for Bandit, and some AD carries will get it for things like Dangerous Game and, and everything else, um, you know, because Merciless tends to be pretty good on them. Uh, but actually, very frequently, if you're not going all the way down to 18 points for Thunderlord's Decree and, and the things next to it, um, you're often doing 18 points ferocity 
into 12 points resolve, or simply 12 points, or sorry, 18 points resolve into 12 points ferocity. And so uh, this is what I noticed by looking at basically the 15 most played champions in every single role and comparing what was commonly picked versus what is actually winning games. And very commonly, we see people say, ooh, I'm playing Aurelia, I'm going to go further fervor of battle, and then I'm going to get dangerous game, and I'm going to be super cool, and what's actually better off is playing Aurelia, going Courage of the Colossus for your E-stun, and then getting 12 points Ferocity for the rest of your damage, and forsaking little things like Battering Blows and Ferocity, forsaking the little bits of damage you're getting out of Cunning, and getting a ton of tankiness down here. That ends up being actually quite a bit better for those kinds of champions. So that's the kind of science we learned in the Masteries. Uh, one other point is uh, the numbers are a bit closer here, so it's not obviously always correct, but with a lot of marksmen actually, and I actually was doing this already for champions like Vayne, um, is, uh, again, you go your 18 points ferocity because you're probably using Warlord's Bloodlust as an AD carry, but instead of doing sort of meager cunning gains by getting Savagery and Secret Stash and Merciless and, and Dangerous Game, is instead you're able to go deeper into in, into here and get you know, recovery and all the all these damage reduction talents and because you're taking less damage because you're regening a lot more you can actually do something like this and go natural talent and for certain champions this is actually a very big damage boost and it was actually a really big deal to get this instead of some lifesteal it depends on the champion that you're playing but this is some more things that i found out here and so i want you guys to not count out 12 points resolve 12 points ferocity almost every single top laner is going to go 12 0 18 um, because Courage of the Colossus is very good, and even though the Mastery is going to get nerfed as of 6.24 from what we're seeing so far based on PvE patch notes, um, this will still remain very good on most champions. Okay, um, let's move in.